Your patient had their endovascular aortic aneurysm repair surgery. Now they are ready for their postoperative ultrasound. Recall that most endografts are placed so that the proximal landing zone is just below the renal arteries and the distal landing zones are in the right and left common iliac arteries, although sometimes the external iliac or common femoral arteries are used. The postoperative ultrasound protocol includes the same steps as the preoperative ultrasound, plus checking for endoleak, endograft limb velocities, and diameters of the attachments at the distal landing zones. In this lesson, we review a sample postoperative endograft protocol of the aorta. This includes endoleaks, as well as the celiac, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, and renal arteries. We will cover the endograft limbs and iliac arteries in lesson two. Now, let's learn the steps you would take to perform the postoperative ultrasound of the aortic endografts. Begin as you would in a preoperative ultrasound by measuring the anterior posterior diameter of the proximal aorta in transverse view, as you can see in the left image, and then in longitudinal view. Also, obtain a peak systolic velocity measurement. These images should look the same as the preoperative proximal aorta. Just distal to the renal arteries in the mid aorta, you can see echogenic or bright lines along the aorta walls. This is the proximal attachment of the endograft body. In transverse and longitudinal views, obtain the diameters and waveform peak systolic velocity in the proximal endograft body. Moving to the distal aorta, you will see a black circle representing the thrombose aneurysm sac. Within the sac, echogenic circles represent the right and left endograft iliac limbs in transverse view. These are usually easy to recognize. This sac area is where the majority of endoleaks can be detected on ultrasound. Namely, type 2 endoleaks are seen here. Measure the anterior-posterior diameter of the distal aorta in transverse view, from outermost wall to outermost wall, including all of the thrombosed area. In this longitudinal image, you can see the right and left endograft iliac limbs bifurcating from the endograft body within the aneurysm sac. You should confirm the anterior-posterior diameter measurement of the aneurysm sac in longitudinal view. Remember to measure perpendicular to the vessel, not necessarily from top to bottom of the screen. Now, concentrate on important additional images needed for the postoperative ultrasound, checking for endoleak. Remember, we need to add color to check for endoleaks. Recall that endoleaks are leakage of bidirectional or completely retrograde, meaning backward flowing. Blood flow through the abdominal arteries, like the lumbar or inferior mesenteric arteries, back into the aneurysm sac. Endoleaks can also occur through the endograft attachment sites or through the endograft material itself. They can cause aneurysm growth and rupture and sometimes need to be repaired. Endoleaks are challenging to see on ultrasound. You're looking for color flow outside of the endograft limbs within the aneurysm sac, which should be thrombosed. When checking for endoleak, turn the machine's color scale down to less than 20 centimeters a second to increase sensitivity of the machine to pick up slow blood flow within the aneurysm sac. The scale in this image is set to 7.7 .7 centimeters a second. In an ultrasound with no endoleaks, like in this example, you will only see color within the endograft limbs. Any color seen outside of the endograft limbs indicates an endoleak, as seen here. The larger one at the top is from retrograde inferior mesenteric artery flow. This is the most common type of endoleak and is called a type 2 endoleak. Type 2 endoleaks may also occur in the lumbar arteries as seen in the smaller leak on the bottom, which is likely from a lumbar artery. Remember type 2 endoleaks are due to bidirectional or retrograde flow through an artery, usually the IMA or lumbar arteries, rather than through an attachment site or graft material defect. Since type 2 endoleaks are usually from the lumbar or inferior mesenteric arteries, they are usually visualized in these areas of the aneurysm sac. An inferior mesenteric artery leak would appear above or to the left of the left limb. Lumbar leaks would usually appear in the bottom corners. Let's take a look at this video showing an endoleak. First, note the color representing blood flow outside of the endograft limbs within the aneurysm sac. Secondly, 
we see an endoleak circled in the upper right of the screen. This represents a bidirectional inferior mesenteric artery leak, a type 2 endoleak. There is also a possible type 2 endoleak from the lumbar artery, as seen on the bottom right. The color artifact outside of the outlined aneurysm sac are from shadows caused by bowel gas. If you can see which vessel is feeding the aneurysm sac, obtain a waveform from it. It will usually be bidirectional blood flow, which shows us the waveform oscillating above and below the baseline, as seen in this IMA waveform. In the post-operative ultrasound protocol, after checking for endoleak, resume the preoperative protocol by obtaining waveform peak systolic velocities of the celiac, superior, and inferior mesenteric and renal arteries. Velocity measurements in the SMA, IMA, and renal arteries help diagnose stenosis caused by an endograft migration or by plaque. Waveform characteristics and peak systolic velocities should be the same as the preoperative ultrasound. Make sure the renal, celiac, superior mesenteric, and inferior mesenteric arteries are all patent and the endograft hasn't blocked them. Let's move on to the postoperative evaluation of the endograft limbs, distal landing zones, and iliac arteries. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.